You don't want to use the knife. No. No to the knives. No, no to the knives. So a while ago I had a video titled, Five Mistakes to Avoid Before Decorating Your Cake. And today I am going to be reacting to it. But not only that, I'm going to be answering some of the most frequent questions that I receive in the comments. So let's get right into it. Mistake number one is allowing your cakes to cool in the pan. Without getting into a whole lot of science behind why this happens, simply put, if you leave your cakes to cool in the pan, chances are you will not be able to remove your cake from the pan. So just don't do it. I would say I get the most frequent comments from this particular tip in regards to not allowing your cake to cool in the pan. So I am going to slightly retract that statement. Okay, so let me clear this up. There is one kind of cake in particular where I know this tip does not apply and that is chiffon cake. Because of chiffon cake's structure, it's absolutely necessary for this type of cake to cool completely in the pan. Otherwise, you run the risk of deflating the chiffon cake and that's definitely what you do not want to do, especially if it's baking in a tube pan. The other exception is if you have prepared your pan with parchment paper. So the parchment paper actually allows you to have a barrier between your baked cake and the pan, which creates a non-stick kind of situation here. So you don't necessarily have to remove the cake from the pan if you have prepped the pan with parchment paper. Preparing your cake pan with parchment paper is something that isn't often done by beginners. So I do get a lot of comments from people who are more experienced in baking who completely disagree with this particular tip. I received this really, really um, interesting comment a while back um, where the person had mentioned that they do allow their cake to cool in the pan and then they take a knife. They take a knife around the sides of the pan once the pan is completely cooled and they remove the cake from the pan. You don't want to use the knife. No no to the knives. The reason why you would want to avoid this mistake is so that you don't have to end up using knives which could inadvertently rip and cut into your cake as you're removing it from the pan. You never want to allow your cake to cool in the pan because chances are you have prepped that pan with something that would solidify and cause the cake to become stuck in the pan once whatever you prepped it with has cooled down. Okay so now on to the next one. Mistake number two, leaving the dome on your cake. The process for removing a cake dome is called leveling. Now this can be done with a serrated bread knife or a leveler tool. And I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do that. To level your cake with a small leveler, such as this, you want to make the adjustment for the height. Once you have that figured out, you are going to hold the leveler upright and slice through the dome. Once it's cut all the way through, you can see that the dome of the cake lifts off very easily and reveals a nice surface to the top of your cake. To clarify a little bit, leveling your cake actually helps more on the aesthetic side of things to where you will have a nice square and level cake once you actually remove the dome from your baked cake layers. I find that leveling your cake to make it flat and square on the edges really helps with the aesthetic of the cake and it also helps when you're layering up your cake and creating and building your cake. So when you don't level your cake, you have domes, which show in these two pictures here. So this is what a cake looks like that's not level. You see how the sides are rounded? In this example here, they've placed the two layers toward each other where the filling of the cake goes. The leveler tool is my absolute favorite tool. I use this every time I make a cake. And if you don't have a leveling tool, you can easily level your cake layers using a bread knife like this. The key to this method is making sure that you do not use the bread knife and cut completely through the center of the cake initially. What you wanna do is position the bread knife in one location along the side of your cake and gently rotate your cake and work the knife into the center of the cake and lift off the dome on the cake layer. 
Leveling your cake really creates a very professional cake look, whereas you have nice, clean, flat, and square edges to your cake, and you don't have those pesky, rounded edges, which is a telltale sign of a beginning cake decorator. So I received a comment regarding this particular mistake to avoid that just flat out said, hey, don't level the top of your cake. You're creating all of this waste. And when you think about it, what you're creating are cake scraps and they're not necessarily waste. There are a couple things that you can do with cake scraps. The first thing, and I think everyone should be doing this, is actually tasting their cake using the cake scraps that you are given. If you've leveled off the dome, you have extra cake that you can taste and make sure that it's exactly what you want. The other thing that you can do with cake scraps is you can use those to make cake truffles like the one shown here. So the dome of your cake that you've leveled off is not scrap, not at all. Okay, now to our next mistake. Mistake number three, forgetting to pipe the barrier when filling your cake. Now, if you place a layer of cake on top of this, your filling is only gonna spill out of the side. So make sure that you pipe a barrier not on the edge, but slightly in from the edge before placing your filling into the center of your cake. So I haven't gotten very many comments on this one, but so I actually recorded this video at night using whatever light I can find. So that's a little bit of a stylistic change that I've made um, in my more recent videos is I always now use the natural light because I think it makes everything look a thousand times better. Now on to our next mistake. Mistake number four is icing the sides of your cake in long horizontal strokes. Now this is a mistake that I see quite often on social media. In order to get the best results when icing the sides of your cake, you really want to hold your spatula vertically. I haven't received many comments on this particular mistake. I think a lot of people are learning and getting the hang of properly icing your cake. I actually have a couple of videos on my channel that go into detail on the method I use to ice my cakes with buttercream. So those are linked in the description below, so be sure to check those out if you're interested in seeing my whole process. Now on to our next mistake. Mistake number five, skipping the crumb coat. A crumb coat is a thin layer of icing that's meant to encapsulate any crumbs that may have fallen off of your cake from this initial icing process. You definitely do not want to skip the crumb coat if you're working with darker colored cakes. So for example, chocolate cake, red velvet, carrot cake, spice cake, any of those cakes. And that's because the crumbs are a lot darker and they could potentially be harder to cover up, especially if you're using lighter colored icing. I know a lot of people struggle with keeping the crumbs out of their icing when they're icing their cake. The crumb coat is essential in making sure that you have the most beautiful crumb free canvas to add all of your decorations onto your cake and make it look spectacular. So now let's get into the bonus mistake. So remember that bonus mistake I mentioned earlier? We're gonna get into that right now. The bonus mistake is icing your cake with icing that is way, way too thick. Doing so will tear your cake apart. When you go to ice your cake, your icing should be thin and have a whippy texture, but never watery. This is a mistake that I included as a bonus that goes hand in hand with the previous mistake of not using a crumb coat on your cake. If you're new to cake decorating, avoid thick icing at all costs. Now whipped icing typically isn't super thick like this, so I'm talking more so your buttercream icing. If you are using buttercream and you need to thin it out, what you wanna do is add a little bit of water or a little bit of milk to the buttercream, gradually stir it up until it becomes the consistency you need to ice your cake with. Do you wanna know what other icing mistakes you should be avoiding? Click this video here. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit the like button below. And as always, thanks for watching.